Welcome. Here's a revised addendum to the video on the boy-boy paradox. It turns out I didn't have my thinking straight. I've got to give a big shout out to Jeff Joe for really helping me get going on this properly. And hopefully what I do now will be do justice to how he helped me out. So the issue is with the, the second problem I present in that boy-boy paradox video. That Mike, that Mike has two children. And we're told that at least one is a boy. What is the probability that this other child is also a boy? All right. So let me uh, answer it, and first of all, in the way I did in that video, but I'll do it in a slightly different manner. Uh, let me first of all draw a big square that represents the universe of all people with uh, two children. Now, of those people, let's look at their first child. Half of them will have a boy as their first child, and half of them will have a girl as their first child. Fair enough. Of those with a boy as their first child, half will have a girl as their first child, and half will have a boy as their second child. So these are the boy-girl people, and these are the uh, boy-boy people. And amongst those with the first child of a girl, half of those will have a girl as the second child, and half of those has a boy as the second child. So there we are. There's a diagram representing all the possibilities. One quarter of these people would be boy-girl people, one quarter would be boy-boys, one quarter would be girl-boys, and so on. So at face value, let's answer the boy-boy paradox. We're told that at least one is a boy. So it seems as though I'm being told I'm either dealing with Mike, who could be in this part of the diagram, or Mike who could be in this part of the diagram, or Mike who could be in this part of the diagram, but certainly not in that bottom left corner of the diagram. What's probably the other child's also a boy is asking, all right, what's the chances that Mike belongs to this section of the diagram, given the information is somewhere in the black area of this diagram? Well, clearly it looks like the answer is one third. And that's the answer I gave in the video, but then there's an issue. What I've assumed here is is something about at least one is a boy. How am I told this? What, what do I know about at being told at least one is a boy? If there was some edict out there that said that all people with at least one child, two couple of people with at least one child, must wear a sign on their foreheads declaring that at least one of their children is a boy, then I know that everyone in this top left scenario is going to be, is going to be forced to tell me I have at least one boy. And everyone here in this girl-boy scenario is going to be, to be forced to tell me there's at least one boy amongst their family. And of course, everyone here is going to be telling me there's at least one boy in their family as well. If I know that everyone in this black is going to tell me there's at least one boy, then this, I guess, is the correct argument, correct answer. But, but is this really likely, what I've just said? Think of it this way. I meet Mike on the street. I somehow learn that he has at least one boy because he happened to mention his son, John, is out there playing soccer or something right now. Or he shows me a photograph. Who knows? But... As a sta bystander here, I don't know where Mike is. If he's a boy-girl couple, for all I know, he could have just as easily just told me about his other child, which is a girl who's also playing soccer in a different field right now. So I would argue, of all the boy-girl couples who are going to show me a photograph of one of their kids, half of them will show me a boy, and the other half will do what Mike did and show me, uh, show me a boy, and the other half will show me a girl. Of all the girl-boy couples, half will show me a photograph of a boy, and the other half will show me a photograph of a girl. And of all the boy-boy couples that are showing me a photograph of one of their kids, all of them will be end up showing me a photograph of a boy. So what I've really got here is a scenario, okay, Mike showed me a photograph of one of his kids, it's a boy. What are the chances he's a boy-boy person amongst all these green scenarios of that showed me a photograph of a boy? Well, now the answer, as you can see, is different. In fact, I need the probability of this area, the proportion of this area out of the total green area. Well, that's clearly one quarter of the area is the top left corner. Out of all the green is that one quarter plus half of a quarter plus half of a quarter. That is um, one quarter area out of a half area. That's one half. So in that scenario, I would have to argue the probability of Mike being a boy-boy person is one half. All right. Now, it all depended on my assumption of what I believed of the percentage of people in these sort of a other scenarios that are going to be telling me about a boy. If you interpret this at least being told at least one is a boy is an edict or some sort of you know command from on high that I were told that all the people in the boy girl boy girl scenarios give me a boy and all the people in the girl boy scenarios give me, boy scenarios give me a, girl, a boy, then the answer is one third. If I believe that I meet Mark in the street and half these people in the scenario are going to give me a, a, tell me about a boy and half these people are going to tell me about a boy, then the answer is one half. If you believe there's a good percentage of pathological liars out there, then you might argue that this, this proportion of little green here and little green here is out of whack, and you'll come up with a different answer. So the, the argument is this is highly ambiguous and all depends on what you believe about the percentage of people that will tell you about their boys. In fact, uh, let me go to Lulu. Uh, this is going to be more profound, and I basically leave this as an exercise for you to sort of work your way through. Da, 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 da. 
here's the scenario of the Lulu. She tells me she has two children, at least one is a boy. Somehow I learned that information, born on a Tuesday. Well, it's probably the other child is also a boy. Well, let me do the whole scenario again. Here's the universe of all two children couples. Uh, half will have the first child being a girl and half will have the first child being a boy. But uh, putting biological factors aside, uh, we'll assume that one-seventh of those boys, that's one-seventh of that half, are going to be boys born on Tuesday and the remaining the proportion that half is going to be boys born on other days. And ditto for the second child, half will be girls, and the second child will have uh, one, oops, one seventh of that half being boys born on Tuesday, and the remaining portion of that half being boys born on other days. So this is half, that's one seventh of one half, and the remaining of that half. All right, so we're somehow dealing with people with boys born on Tuesdays. That's fine. I want to know what's the probability that uh, we're dealing with a proportion of people with both child, children being boys. Well, all the question again is going to be ambiguous again. To what extent do we want to believe that um, that that what percentage of people will tell us about a boys, or how do we learn about percentage of people will tell us boys born on Tuesdays? If I believe that absolutely everyone with one at least one child born on a Tuesday is going to impart that information to me, if there's choice then I'll go with the answer I gave in the video, which I believe is, what is it, 13 out of 27. That's just a little area problem. What's the, what's the proportion of this area out of all the black area? However, you might argue something different. In fact, to really answer this question properly, I need to be told what percentage of people in the scenario are going to be tell, tell me about their, their Tuesday boys, I call that percentage one. And I guess you might want to say by symmetry, percentage one applies to these people as well. And what percentage of these people are going to tell me about their boys on the Tuesday? That's percentage two percentage two, and I guess everyone here is going to be telling me about that boys born on Tuesday. If I don't know these percentages, I don't know what proportion of these sections to deal with, then I don't know how to answer this question. That's my point. Um, you might find a way, let me ask you this way, can you devise correct numbers for these percentages so that actually the answer is a half again, like for Mike? What's the scenario for that? What's the belief about how this question should be interpreted? In fact, I bet you can find percentages that you can come up with most any answer you like. Most any answer you like. All right. Thanks very much. I'll leave that for you to ponder upon. Hopefully, this has cleared things up. We need to know, this question is ambiguous. You need to know what percentages of people in the definite little sort of uh, choice scenarios are going to be telling you what. Once you've got that pinned down, then you can actually answer these questions. Thanks very much.